All right, so now that we've finished our um, typical roof cross bracing detail, I'm going to come back to my roof framing layout. Now, what I want is I want to take uh, a cross section through um, one of my fly braces. Okay, um, we can do it through here, we can um, do it through our 3D view. Again, there's many different ways we can do it. I'm going to take a section and then hide the section. So section, I'm going to take a real small section through here. Okay. The reason I'm getting this side is because my connection is on this side. All right. So as small as I can, right click, go to view, define one to 20. I'm just going to drag this the whole way up. All I'm interested in is this detail here, this fly brace. Okay. So this beam system, um, I'll hide. Now this here is my C section. It's appearing very thin here. Um, Revit just uh, has to um, load it in a bit better. So I'm just going to change the section size. Um, in order for Revit to come back and give me um, the proper detail. So that's a bit better. Um, shaded and detail level of fine. Cool. So this is my fly brace here. Gonna hide this one. Um, I'll just assemble. What we can do is we can show a center line here as well. I know in previous drafting you guys um, have gone through the centerline marks and where to put them and why. Um, so I'm just going to hide this one. And this is the fly brace detail here. So uh, my annotation crop, I'm just going to expand it out again to give me plenty of room to write with. Turn off my crop region, apply. Okay, now I need a break line here and here because I know this rafter is continuous. Uh, sorry, this purlin is continuous. If I continue out, I will see that it keeps going. So annotate component, detail component, rotate after placement, and at 90. Okay. And there to there. Again, just for the aesthetics. It all depends on the person that's doing it. Uh, mirror, can I grab a center point? Okay. And I'll just tidy that up. Okay, so undo my crop region, apply. This is my detail here. So what I need to do, this is my rafter. This is my perlin. So TX, P capitals, PL1, so perlin. And this is my R1. So again, make these just slightly bigger and just neat them up with where they're standing or sitting on our drawings. Cool. Now this plate here, hold tab, plate, it's eight mil thick plate, it's 190 high, 75 wide. So text. I have a 75 by 195 high by 8 millimeters thick. So these here should be lowercase. Um, and that's our cleat plate. And here I have two bolts. So two M, and from memory, these were M16 bolts, 8.8. .8 high strength, 
bolts that are snug fit. Okay, I'll just check these now. So, bolt 16 millimeters, awesome. So I select my um, text, put a leader on to the left, and that's sitting here quite nicely. Okay, so next I have my angles that I have to do with, and then my bolts as well. So I'll go TX. So this here was a 50 by 50 by three equal angle. And I have one on this side here as well. Okay. So to the right and then to the left. Okay. Now here I have a plate down the bottom as well. So this here is a 12 mil plate. And then I have two bolts here as well. So I have two M16s. So TX, what I'm going to have is a 12 millimeter plate um, with two M16 bolts. Um, these are 8.8 S bolts. Now again, um, we will specify on our general notes this 8.8 um, grade um, so you don't have to specify them everywhere that we are but it's good practice okay so this will sit there okay um, now that will finish off our typical fly brace detailing again giving our um, details enough information to come up with cost and shop drawings and an estimate for the overall structure. So this here is our typical um, fly brace connection detail. So I will change my section name. So rename to our uh, typical, all in capital, sorry, typical fly brace connection detail 